In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your At the midpoint of Advent, the church sings, Rejoice in the Lord, the Lord is near. Realizing we are in God's presence, let us pray. Lord Jesus, you, your kingdom brings rejoicing. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your kingdom casts out fear. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your kingdom embraces all. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O oh God, who sees how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to obtain the joys of so great as salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The crowds asked John the Baptist, what should we do? And he said to them in reply, whoever has two cloaks should share with a person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? And he answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? And he told them, Do not practice extortion, do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. And John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, and I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the weed into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. Traditionally it has been referred to as Gaudate Sunday, meaning Rejoice Sunday. In the midst of this season of anticipation and preparation, the church calls us to be filled with joy as we prepare for the coming of Christ. True Christian joy is becoming more difficult to find these days as we allow ourselves to be ever more influenced by the world around us. As disciples of Jesus, we are not to see joy merely as a fleeting emotion nor should the source of our joy ever be seen in the reception of the things of this world. Christian joy comes not from things, but from Christ himself. In our first reading today, the prophet Zephaniah calls the people to rejoice, and the source of the joy to which he calls them is absolutely marvelous. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. We are rapidly approaching our celebration of the fulfillment of that prophecy with the birth of the Savior in Bethlehem. Yet we must be careful not to limit this celebratory joy to one day or one season of the year. The Lord Jesus in and through his church continues that proclamation in our midst today. Let us pray for each other during these days that can be so difficult for some who may have suffered a loss, are experiencing loneliness, or have grown weary. May we all find comfort and strength in God's presence and always rejoice in his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Almighty God, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The coming of the Lord is near. We have been encouraged to ask for anything we need with prayer and thanksgiving. Therefore, let us pray to the Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the pastors of our church, that they may guide us with sound doctrine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who teach the Catholic faith, that they may make Christ's words and deeds known to the people with charity and enthusiasm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in poverty, that they may know the comforting message of the word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people who participate in this Mass, that they may know the joy of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, that they may come to eternal life with Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most loving Father, hear the prayers of your people, guide the word, world in true peace, and let us serve you in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he, is, he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs>
are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the same and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. You too, Father. <laughs>